In this video, we're going to continue the topic of deferred tax, tackling yet another question um, based around the concepts of deferred tax and the intuition behind it. A relatively simple question this time, but if you want to get this right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. So this is it. In a tax jurisdiction where warranty expenses are tax deductible, when the warranty work is actually performed, making a provision for warranty expenses is most likely to give rise to a deferred tax asset, a deferred tax liability, or no deferred tax effects. So before we provide the correct answer, let's look at this from the perspective of our um, balance sheet and income statement template, uh, which I'm showing you right now, something you've um, already become used to. Now, it's got the uh, years 2022, 2023, um, which is carried on from previous questions. Uh, but in this question, we don't have specific years and we don't actually have specific numbers. It's 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 a conceptual question, a theoretical one. Nevertheless, I'm going to keep these, uh, you know, year uh, numbers. They won't hurt. What does it mean when we say that a company um, recognizes a um, an expense or a provision, sorry, for warranty expenses or warranty related work expenses? Very often, when a company sells a product and receives revenue from a client, it will also, under IFRS or US GAAP rules, have to recognize a provision for the fact that over the coming one, two years, it will, statistically speaking, have to perform some warranty work which will cost it some money. So at a time when we recognize within PNL something positive, well, let's say this over here, so like a profit from a sale, we should also, um, at the same in the, at the same time or in the same column, recognize the fact that more likely than not, or probably, we will also in the future have to incur some expenses for for which the client will not pay us additional money because we'll have to repair a product that is still covered by a warranty, a guarantee, or any other such similar measure. So what companies must do is at the same time when they recognize the profit from the sale, they also recognize an expense, um, warranty expenses, but not for warranty, exp not for expenses already kind of physically incurred as such. So something negative here, but for an estimate of the warranty work and the cost of that warranty work that they'll need to perform in the future. So they hit the PL with something negative. Now, this is very subjective and um, it's, it's not necessarily easy to calculate this. It's based typically on past, um, past performance and how much such warranty work had cost, in, cost us in the past. At the same time, as we hit the PL with this negative item, we also, within our liabilities, create an item called provision or provision, provisions, provision for um, warranty expenses or warranty work, which um, comes in here as a liability. So our liabilities grow. And let's say, you know, this was an amount X which hit our income statement or impacted our income statement negatively. And this uh, also leads to the creation of a liability. And as you will know, ultimately, whatever we do to the PL, in this case, it's something negative, will have an impact on our equity over here. So whatever we did here will have a downward impact on our retained earnings within equity. However, what the question said, and let me go just for a moment to the question, and uh, I'm not going to clear my board here, so you will for at least a moment see the, uh, the writing, but I'm back to the question. It says, in a tax jurisdiction where warranty expenses are tax deductible when the warranty work is actually performed, meaning you don't treat this as a tax deductible expense when you recognize the provision, because that's only an estimate of the work you'll have to perform in the future. This becomes a tax deductible expense, so something that will actually create a tax saving um, realistically on a cash basis when you do the warranty work, which is at some future point in time. Maybe, you know, the warranty work will be performed in 2023. Let's make a quick assumption that this is the case. So. 
in 2023, you actually perform the work. So um, cash comes out because you have to pay for it or in some way suffer a an expenditure. And let's say you do the work over here, cash comes out. And at that point in time, you no longer hit the PL because you've already hit it with the amount X in 2022. You kind of... Um, accelerated the recognition of that expense. That's the whole point of creating provisions. Now, I'm assuming that the cost of the work is the amount X, which was also the amount we provided for, we created a provision for. However, in reality, that these two will rarely match, seeing as actual expenses or actual costs may differ from what we previously estimated. However, for this simple example, that's not really the point, so I'm going to keep it the same amount, X. So in the period when the cash is actually spent, you will simply derecognize the provision. Because this is sitting here to show I've already hit my PL. And when you incur the cash expense, the cash cost, you just derecognize the provision without for the second time hitting the PL with the same amount. That's the whole point. Now, following the logic of the intuition behind, behind deferred tax, you should appreciate that if this is tax deductible now on a cash basis, tax deductible in 2023, cash basis, then already in 2022, we are effectively looking forward, standing here, right? If you're standing here, you're kind of looking forward to something positive to the fact that in the future, when the expense is incurred, it will have a positive impact on our tax um, tax liability. We'll have less, less tax to pay uh, because of that. However, the tax effect is felt in the future, in 2023, but for financial reporting purposes, we've already recognized the expense in our PL. So in order to make things aligned, we should accelerate the recognition of that benefit. We should have something positive in our PL to show that this expense comes with the side effect of a tax saving. That means recognizing a deferred tax asset within our um, assets and appropriately a deferred tax, um, deferred tax, something positive here that goes to PL. Now, you could also think about it from the point of view of the rules uh, that we introduced a couple of lessons ago. The provision for warranty work is sitting within our liabilities. And the sort of classic textbook rule is, if for liabilities, the carrying amount of a liability is higher than its tax base, and it is because the carrying amount here is in the, in the balance sheet X. And from a tax perspective, it's zero. This doesn't exist in any tax-based balance sheet because the only reason why this exists here is because we've recognized the expense in the PNL. If you did something similar for tax purposes, you wouldn't have a, an expense in PNL and you wouldn't have, therefore, a, a corresponding liability. So if this is the case, if this is, um, you know, if this is higher than the tax base, which is absolutely the case here, just like in the previous question, you're going to have a deductible temporary difference, which culminates in the recognition of a deferred tax asset. But once again, let me stress that this can also be much more easily understood or interpreted as when I pay or when I suffer the actual tax, uh, when I suffer the cash outflow, I'll be able to lower my tax liability as a result, my taxable income and tax liability. So already today, I am looking forward to a tax saving. And a saving should always be associated in your heads with a deferred tax asset. So with everything we said and drew out, the answer is obviously a, a deferred tax asset, because at the end of the year in which we've made the provision, or we provided for the expense in PNL, we are also looking forward to a future tax saving.